for attending. Uh, in my former life, I actually negotiated uh, health care plans uh, through collective bargaining. I was the president of the Iron Workers Union, uh, Mr. Gruber, and, uh, and we're having a lot of problems in Massachusetts uh, in, in our home state with uh, some provisions of the Affordable Care Act, especially the, the uh, so-called Cadillac tax. Now, now, you and I know that uh, for a very long time, health care, until, until the Affordable Care Act, health care was not taxed. So when I sat down with good employers, good employers who uh, cared about their employees, uh, oftentimes they were more willing to, to give their employees an increase in their health benefits instead of putting it in their, their wages because wages were taxed through the payroll tax and health care was not. So now as a result of, of negotiating for 75 years uh, on that basis, uh, you've got a lot of the unions uh, across this country that have built up multi-employer health benefit plans for health care for their employees. And uh, because these employees have, instead of taking money in their wages, they've taken money in their benefit plans, we've got most of the health care plans, these multi-employer union health care plans are, are subject to this Cadillac tax today, even though it doesn't come into effect until 2018. So, so now what I'm seeing is that employers are running away from their health care obligations because now they're going to be taxed a 40 percent tax on everything over and above uh, the, the limits that have been established under the ACA. So I've got formerly good, good employers who now are saying, wait a minute, I'm going to get killed by this Cadillac tax. Uh, number one, they're, they're, running, they're abandoning their, their responsibilities to these plans. They're, they're trying to get out. They're trying to buy their way out. They're just reorganizing. They are, in some cases, they're cutting their companies in half so they can try to get below 50 employees so that they're not covered. They are, and, and new companies are not coming into these multi-employer plans. So now I've got the unions, a lot of them who were in favor of this bill, now asking me to repeal it vote to repeal it. They're coming to me. As, and I'm, I'm a union member. I'm, I'm a former union president. And I got these unions saying, repeal this thing. And now, fortunately for me, I voted against it to begin with. I voted against the Affordable Care Act because, unlike some people, I, I actually sat down and read it. And it was, it was one of the most complex bills that I have ever read. And I had a full staff helping me with questions on that. So, so I think that uh, this has presented a lot of problems for people who thought they were going to benefit from this plan. And how, how, do I, how, how, do, how do I fix this? How do I fix this so that previously good employers who are trying to do the right thing by their employees will, will continue to, to do that? Because these construction workers, they don't work 52 weeks a year. They get laid off and in between jobs, they have bad weather, they, get, they have broken time. So they needed this format to provide for their families to get health insurance. And now these good employers are running away from their health care uh, obligations because they see this, this tax coming down the road in 2018, and a lot of them are refusing to, to re-up on their collective bargaining agreements. They're walking away. And how do, how do we help these, these employees? Because now they're being told, go to the exchange. We don't do that anymore. We're out of the health care business. How do we help those folks? Uh, well, uh, Congressman Lynch, I'm, I'm not an expert on collective bargaining agreements, and I can't conjecture on, on that. Um, what I can say is that the way the Cadillac tax was designed, there's no reason that these employers can't provide affordable and comprehensive insurance under the provisions of the Cadillac tax. It's 40 for every dollar over the limit, they're paying a dollar 40. But once again, given where the limit's set, there's no reason they can't provide affordable and comprehensive insurance to their employees under the Cadillac tax. Well, wait a minute. They're competing with other employers on a bid, just so you know how this works. If we're bidding on a construction project and you're, you have 49 employees and I have 150, 
My bid includes $13 an hour for health care. Your bill, your, your, your bid is zero. How do I win the bid if I'm putting for every man hour on that job, I'm putting $13 an hour on my bid, and you're putting zero on yours? How, how do I win? I'm out of business. There's been a long-standing problem. Now, you say I can afford it? How do I win that bid if my bid for every man hour on that job, I have to put $13 an hour on my bid, and you can put zero and send your people to the exchange or you're not, you, you, you're not obligated to, to, to account for health care? How, how does that work? The expired. Uh, Mr. Gruber can answer. Uh, the, there's been a long-standing problem of competition between employers that do and don't offer health insurance. The Affordable Care Act actually tries to address that through a free rider assessment on large employers that don't provide insurance and tries to level the playing field in that way. 